At the sheds, the engines were talking about the events that took place with Oliver and the Beast. I feel so sorry for Duck. I mean, losing a best friend is never fun. I do too, Edward. Duck's not taking it very well. He's very depressed. But at least he's got Thomas and I taking turns helping him out. At some point, Sir Topham Hat's gonna have to find another engine to replace Oliver. What about Capulet? He's Duck's brother and he's Great Western. He lives somewhere on the mainland. I don't know where. I'm sure Gordon would be happy to help with the goods work. Certainly not, little James. You will never see me pull dirty trucks. But come to think of it, I do feel sorry for Duck. I hope someone comes soon. Another thing we need to figure out is how we're going to cure the diesels. And the road vehicles, for that matter. We tried the milk and soap tactic on them, but it didn't work. Speaking of which, how's Bertie doing? A little better, but he still shook up about it. Did you manage to find Terence? Yes, he's safe and sound with Bertie at the moment. I wonder how Thomas is taking all of this, seeing how he literally watched Oliver and Diesel 10 die. Meanwhile, Thomas was trying to comfort Duck with little luck. Duck, I miss Oliver just as much as you do, but he would want you to work hard and be really useful more than anything else. You don't get it, Thomas. Oliver was more than just a friend. He was like a brother to me. It's my fault he's gone. I should never have annoyed the hell out of him with the Great Western way. Don't you dare say that, Duck. This was in no way your fault. It would hurt Oliver that you say stuff like that. The best thing to do at the moment is to continue to work hard. Then the two engines heard a horn in the distance. There was Daisy, the diesel rail car, one of the very few diesels that weren't affected from the mutation. Daisy, how's it going? Are there any other survivors aside from you? Unfortunately, no. I'm the only diesel left. This mutation is bad for my swerves. Uh, is there anything on this island that's actually good for your swerves? Very funny, Thomas. In all seriousness, I really hope they find a cure soon. In the meantime, we'll just have to stay cautious. If there is a way to cure the steam engines, then there must be a way to cure the diesels. I just hope it's sooner rather than later. I hope so too. Life just hasn't been the same since the nuclear plant exploded. No indeed, Thomas. No indeed. That night at the sheds, the engines were preparing to go to sleep. Percy decided to overcome his fears and pull the mail train that night, which was fine with Thomas because it gave him a break and let him catch up on sleep. Duck, on the other hand, couldn't sleep. He was still thinking about Oliver. I don't think I can live like this anymore, he thought to himself. Duck then decided to puff out of the shed to clear his head. The puffing woke a sleeping Donald up. <sighs> Duck, where are you going? But by then, Duck was already gone. I better go follow him to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid, and he puffed quietly after Duck. Duck then headed off to the same smelter's yard where Oliver was killed. He looked over at the lava pit and frowned. Don't worry, Oliver. We'll see each other again soon. Duck said as he backed up, as if preparing to jump off. Donald noticed this and quickly rushed over to stop Duck. As the green saddle tank engine was about to jump off, Donald buffered on to Duck and applied his brakes. Donald, let go of me. I can't do that, Duck. Oliver wouldn't want this. I have no choice, Donald. My best friend is gone all because of me. I will not let you go through with this. We already lost one engine on our branch line. We are not about to lose another. Duck was silent for a moment. He wanted to jump off, but deep down inside, he knew Donald was right. You're right. I guess I just need some professional help. Please, Donald, will you take me home? Now that I can do, Letty. And the two puffed home. Meanwhile, Percy continued on his way with the mail train. Daisy, the diesel rail car, was in a nearby shed, 
She couldn't sleep either, but for different reasons. Having another one of those nights, Daisy? Unfortunately, yes, Percy. I don't blame you. You're basically one of the only Diesels that wasn't affected by the mutation. I just wish there was a way to help my Diesel kin. Then they heard a horn in the distance. There was a mutated Diesel rolling towards them, followed by a mutated Mavis. Percy, I'm frightened. I think we should get out of here. I agree. Let's go! And the two engines puffed away as fast as they could with the two mutant diesels following them. And to make matters worse, a mutated Bulko was after them as well. We're never gonna outrun them. Oh yes we are. Follow me, Daisy. I have an idea. When they got to the next signal box, Percy ordered the signalman to change the points once he and Daisy passed. The signalman wasted no time and changed the points so that Percy and Daisy could go into a siding and then changed the points back to make the diesels go straight ahead. <sighs> okay, I think we lost them. Daisy, are you all right? Yes, darling, I think so. Wait a minute, is that sugar over there? And sure enough, there were vans of sugar staying stationary in the siding. Where did those vans of sugar come from? I don't know, but one thing I do know is that we Diesels hate sugar. Something to do with blocking our systems. It's bad for my swerves. Wait a minute, all Diesels are weak to sugar? I thought that was a weakness exclusively for Diesel 10. I'm a Diesel, and even I'm not safe from sugar's dangers. This gave Percy an idea. What if sugar is the cure to the Diesel's mutation. What the Percy, are you mad? I am mad, mad enough to try everything in my power to save our friends. There are four vans. Daisy, you take two and I'll take two. What? No, I can't pull those old things. I'm supposed to be at my best. It could be bad for my swerves. Daisy, do you want to save our friends or not? Well, I do, but... Then stop being lazy daisy for once and help. Ugh, fine. But I'm only doing this for our friends. So Daisy took two vans of sugar, while Percy took the other two. The first thing the two engines did was go see Sir Topham Hat. They got to the nearest station and Percy's driver telephoned for Sir Topham Hat. When Sir Topham Hat met Percy at the station, he was still in his pajamas. Percy, you better have a damn good reason for waking me up at three in the morning. I might have the answer to our diesel mutation problem, sir. Sir Topham Hat listened very carefully to what Percy had to say. Then he pondered about it. Hmm, that's very interesting. I will attend to the matter in the morning and he walked off. It will most likely be worse by tomorrow, Percy said to himself. Daisy heard Percy. At least Sir Topham Hat knows about it now. Yeah, that's true. I guess the only thing we can do is have you go back to your sheds and me finish my mail run. Actually, Percy, could I tag along? I'm kind of afraid of the dark. Of course, Daisy, and the two finished off the mail work. The next morning, Percy arrived back at the sheds and was about to tell the others about his plan when Sir Topham had arrived. Sir, Percy began. I know, Percy. I haven't forgotten. That's why I'm here. But since you're here, tell the other engines about your plan. I believe that sugar may be the key to curing the diesels. Sugar? But I always thought it harmed diesels. If it's harmful to normal diesels, then mutant diesels shouldn't be any different. Daisy was also at the sheds. Percy's right. It may sound crazy, but I think it's worth a shot. But would it be able to cure the road vehicles as well? They both run using similar engines, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. Well, I for one am in. So am I and all the other engines whistled and cheered in agreement. Then it's settled. 
Let's go cure some diesels. And all the engines set off to find as much sugar as possible. Meanwhile, Duck was puffing along his branch line. He was in a much better mood now. He thought about what Donald had said and knew he was right. Oliver would want me to continue to work hard and be really useful, he thought to himself. At the next station, he met Donald. Hey, Donald? Yes, laddie, what is it? Thank you for being there in my time of need. Oh, hi, it's no trouble at all. I'm just trying to look out for a friend. Then Percy chuffed in. Duck, Donald, we need your help. Meet us at Knapford Station. We have a plan to cure all the diesels. Right, I'll get Dougie. We will be at Knapford Station as soon as possible. When the engines got to Knapford Station, mutant diesels were blocking the passageway. All right, engines, get the sugar ready. And the engines prepared to throw the sugar at the mutants. The mutants lunged forward. Fire! And the engines began rapid firing the sugar. Before they knew it, all the diesels were going back to normal. It's working! Keep firing! They even managed to cure Devious Diesel. And soon, all the diesels were cured. Yes, we did it! We've won! Well, what do you know? Sugar actually worked. But there was another problem. As the diesels tried to move, they broke down. Wait, what's happening? It's the sugar. It's causing the diesels to malfunction. I might have to take them to the works to be mended. But don't worry, diesels. You will be back in service in no time. But it's not over yet. Now we need to cure the road vehicles. Right. Everyone, bring the sugar to the roads. And all the engines raced away to cure all the road vehicles one by one. And soon even they were cured. But due to the sugar, the road vehicles had to go get mended as well. Which meant the steam engines had to do extra work. But they didn't mind, because all they wanted was to be really useful. And soon all the engines of Sodor were fully cured. And life on Sodor was back to normal once more. While some engines like Edward and Duck were still traumatized by the events, they still managed to keep an open mind and keep working. And the island of Sodor was one of the most popular tourist attractions once more.